there. So that in a quick nutshell is kind of the travel part. From a business standpoint, um, we're gonna gear the rest, rest of this call for those of you really looking to tweak something um, to, like I said, really go and add a zero or two uh, to whatever you're making already using this as a vehicle to do. So uh, this gentleman, I've been very excited for months to be able to do a call with him. Um, a lot of you know him as a professional athlete, which is great. Um, he's you know, had a very successful football career, um, been a successful business owner, and some other traditional business stuff. Uh, but on top of all of that, as he was kind of transitioning out of his uh, professional football career to kind of life after football, he chose to take World Ventures serious. And not only is one of the hardest working people I've ever met, he's honestly one of the nicest, most down to earth, genuine guys you're ever going to meet. Um, you know, you probably won't be able to tell his size on, uh, on a Zoom call, but uh, let, let's just say that uh, I would want to be able to hang out with him if I'm having to play any sort of sporting event on a dream trip. I want him on my team, not on somebody else's. But for real, Keith is one of the most genuine guys you're ever going to meet. Hit the highest rank in our company, international marketing director. Um, one of the most inspirational guys you're going to see in our entire company. People have been requesting him for months to be on one of these calls. And I am so humbled, honored, and grateful to be able to uh, finally get him on here to be able to share with everyone and pour in. So guys, if this is your first call, you're in for a treat. The one and only international marketing director, Mr. Keith Willis. Keith, did you make the call, bro? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Hey, loud and clear, my brother. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your Saturday. Um, and uh, the floor's all yours. Take it away. Man, first let me say, Dave, thanks for, uh, I'm glad this finally worked out. I know we've been talking about this for over six months, easily over six months. And um, it finally worked out. You've done an amazing job on this platform, brother, you, your team. And then shout out to you for just the work you put in um, through this pandemic. We all know Dave is literally probably outperforming the entire company right now, setting the trend. And I can't wait to see the IMD post come across the timeline any day now, man. So, point for you and Crystal, man. Y'all doing amazing things. Uh, yeah, so, fam, uh, man, it's a crazy time out here in the world, right? Um, you know, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this company. I'm so grateful to be a part of this organization and for our teams. And um, just for our, our own little world, we live in WV. You know, as I look at what's going on in the world right now, it's just like, it's sad, it's disheartening, but I really believe in WV, we're the light that could push, we, we could be the light in this world just because of the type of people in this world. Um, if anybody knows me or follows me, you know I'm very I'm passionate about justice and, and um, just doing the right thing at all times. Um, I'm not saying we're perfect, but I'm very passionate about that. So um, what I want to tie this into, guys, is like to share my story on why I suggested WV why, um, how I transitioned out of pro football and my success in WV. Then I'm gonna turn it back to David for a couple, uh, couple questions to answer, but I have some fun with this thing, all right? Um, understand when I saw this four and a half years ago, I came out of a place where I was going through a lot in my life at the time, like many of you are. And um, I, I, was, I come from a very skeptical background. I didn't believe in network marketing. I didn't believe it was for people like me. I thought it was for uh, people that just was trying to get quick money or people for some reason already had a bunch of money but it wasn't for nobody like me. I turned my nose up to it for a very long time, but the thing was, it was travel. See, travel made it simple for me because it's something I want to do, a lot of people want to do, everybody wants to do. Because you work all year long to do two weeks of what? Travel. You retire to go do what? Travel. So this was a, uh, an inherent yes when I looked at it. And then as the money side came up, and I was like, I was so going through so much of my life, I couldn't even think about the big money anymore. I was like, can this help, at least help me pay for my rent? You know what I mean? That's all I wanted to know. And my sponsor, Alfie Brown out of Dallas, is like, yes, I can. And so I jumped in. And the day I jumped in, I understand. Um, I come from a background of having two degrees, got my, and working on my PhD, and um, uh, have many different businesses, play at the highest level of football. And when I, when I saw this, I, my car declined the day I signed up. Now you're talking about somebody's car declining who's the best selling author, somebody's car declining who's a world renowned speaker, somebody's car declining who has so much success. That means life smacked me in my face when it's all. So I didn't allow this opportunity. I didn't allow this opportunity to pass because I didn't have the money, right? So one thing I know about having the money, we could borrow the money. If we see something we really want, we go get it. All right. So I got the money, I borrowed it, signed up that same day, that same day, because my car had declined. I got my dues waived that very first day. I got my money back that very first week. I got the residual income that very first month. It's not, and this was on the uh PYP. This wasn't uh the within this kid. This was one membership at a time, all right. And we hit a uh, C-Rep at the uh, first month, and then we hit director in 80 days. 
We had marked the record four and a half months. Then I took my very first drink trip to uh, Vegas and then went to Miami right after that. I saw the product was really real after that. Um, and then from that point, we hit RMD in 14 months. Shortly after that, I got my 100K ring. And less than two years, we hit NMD. And less than three years, two years to 10 months, we hit the top level called IMD. We, um, we as an organization, found some amazing leaders along the way. And see, I knew in the beginning, from the beginning, to be real with you, I just had to fix my own financial situation. I did this for the money in the beginning because I was broke, all right? And so but what I realized was I had the idea that I was going to build this entire thing by myself. I knew I put 3,000 people in, like, because it was just, I just, that's my belief level. But I quickly realized in uh, my upline, uh, Corey told me, he's like, Keith, if the more, the more you want to, um, the more you teach, the more you go to the beach, you won't have to duplicate people. And I was like, what are you talking about, duplicate people? And he explained that you have to literally help people get their four, help them create more leaders. I'm like, oh, I already create leaders. I have a personal development company outside of this. I create leaders all the time. All right, cool. That makes sense. You see, my mindset was, as an entrepreneur, I always worked really hard at stuff, at the business, because it was just me. And I had to build other people, but I hadn't had to lead it. Well, I took those same principles and put it in here, and that's when our organization, organization really took off. And we started creating a, so many leaders, too many to name, but we created leaders across the organization, and then I realized that they were building and going without me. See, my job was just to show them the system, teach it to them, love on them, help them grow as people, and help them find their own why, not my why, but find their own why to why I go build this organization. And that's how we was able to build and hit it in less than three years. Um, so I'll keep that right there. They keep the question for a second. I'm, I'm going to take it back to football, right? When I played ball, you could have never shown me nothing like this because all I saw was six and seven figure people around me. Like the low end, nobody in the locker room was making less than two, three hundred grand. Nobody in the locker room was making less than that. And then we got that money in a short time period. We got all that money in like a 17 week period. So the checks were crazy. But then you see guys, I seen guys with 400, 500 grand a week they were making. A week they were making playing ball. And so this money didn't impress me for the amount of work that had to go into it. So I would have never seen, I, wouldn't, I couldn't even see with the right lens at that time. Um, and so when I got out of football and life, and life, started taking, you know, life started taking this course, I realized the world I lived in football wasn't a real world. It was real for that, but that's not how the world runs. That, those are, uh, that lifestyle, it's hard to maintain that lifestyle. Those checks don't always come in. You're not gonna always have 70,000, 80,000 people calling your name. That's not going to happen for the rest of your life in that world, right? For most people, unless you're like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady or somebody, but for 98% of us, it's not happening. And so when I got out of football, I just did what I knew how to do, go to work. And so I started my traditional businesses, did well with them, some, um, some not so well. And I realized I was doing business wrong. And so I realized the thing I was searching for in entrepreneurship was time and financial freedom. That's what I was really searching for. But I realized the harder I worked, the less time I had. The more time I had, the less money I had. But this vehicle right here, WV, gave me both. It didn't take away from the accomplishments, everything I accomplished between um, football and now. All those things, that's my resume. But I realized the same things that made me successful at the highest level of football and playing college basketball and to, and to prevail in entrepreneurship and business, I took those same exact principles and applied it into WV. And those principles allowed me to help create more leaders better than me now, that allows me to hit IMD in less than three years. So Dave, I'll turn it over to you and then we'll take it from there. Well, there's so much good stuff in that. And, and, and again, I'll, I'll acknowledge that the same way, Keith, you know, it's a really crappy times going around all around right now. It, it is nice, World, World Ventures has, I felt that way for eight years. It really can be a light in dark times. Um, and, and we really do have a, a pretty cool platform with all that. So I, I can appreciate you mentioning that right off the bat. Um, you, as far as you, you were talking from an athlete standpoint and, you know, a lot of people, cause again, we, we dream about, you know, you know, I went to school to be a doctor cause I thought that was, you know, a bunch of people, that's how you become successful or, you know, people want to become a pro athlete cause that's the way you become successful. And like, yes, there's a lot of ways to earn money and, and do all of that. I never knew what residual income was. You know, a lot of people on this call had never even heard of residual income. They at least didn't know it was available unless you got yeah. a shoe deal or, you know, unless you, you know, go, go write a book or, you know, you got a song go viral or something where like just normal people without even that kind of stuff mm -hmm. can create something. 
that'll keep paying you long after the work is over. Um, because you know, I, 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 yeah. I know you know a lot of people that the same way. Um, you know, I, I've I, I've heard stories, read stuff myself the same way too. Where you know, there, there's the guys that the second they're done playing, all of a sudden life looks a lot different when that 500 grand a week check isn't still coming in, um, and, and they they didn't figure out you know what to keep doing with it, or you know again you get used to spending something as fast as it comes in, no matter how much money you're making. Um, when when something's not residual, even when your people are done playing, they still got residual bills. Now they just didn't have that that income continuing to come the same way where. That's what I fell in love with this, you know, real early on. But you're right. You know, if you want to go make 10 grand fast, or go make 100 grand fast, there are other things that you would do that for. But if you want to go build something that pays you residually month after month, year after year, you know, I think that's why a lot of the big boys and girls choose to do something like this because they see the value of it. Um, you know, we had Eric on here a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about anything worth doing, you know, is, is going to have delayed gratification. I guarantee you, you don't get to the, maybe, maybe there's two, percent of the of the people that just coast off of the you know their talent alone and, and still make because they're just so incredibly talented but I, I, I would venture to guess that 99 98 percent of the people that make it to the NFL or the NBA or whatever, they had to work their butt off to get there and again that's what I, I love working with athletes because you know for the most part I keep their teachable and the coachable um, you know you guys this work ethic is just so you know um, at, at an absolute high that when you apply it to something like this, especially when it can be done in a spare time basis, and then it starts getting you paid in a place you don't have to always be, like they, 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 as soon as somebody wraps their head around that, you don't have to be an athlete to get that, but um, athletes just seem to click with that right away. And then again, you're making money as a team. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're all taught to go to school, get good grades, we can go get a job or work by ourselves and, and only get paid off of what one of us does. Whereas here, you know, you get to transition, you get to, you know, the more you go help, you, you know, the people that you care the most about, the more you're automatically going to have success too. And it's, it's such a different way of doing things, but once people wrap their head around it, they're like, why have I wasted my time trying to do anything else? And that, that again, that's what I love with travel too. It appeals to everybody. I mean, right now, you guys, I, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on this call right now. You can think of talking to your significant other, anybody you went to school with, anybody you used to play sports with, or your grandma. They all taking trips in the months ahead. And we can let them go pay full price on Expedia or we hook them up with the discount. And then on top of that, we start showing them a better way. Where, I, mean, I mean, Keith, I, my wife and I are getting paid today for work we did back in 2011. Like that's mind boggling to me. I have to step back and really think of that sometimes. Like I literally did something at 22 years old that, you know, I turned 31 on Wednesday. I'm still getting paid for. Like right. where else can you do something like that? You know? So um, I, I, I can appreciate all of what you're saying with that. Um, you mentioned, you mentioned something that I think is really important. Maybe we can go back and forth on that. You, you talked about, you got to help people find their why. And then, you know, you help people do it for their reasons, not just for, for yours. You know, there's a lot of people on this call that are having success. They, you know, they put, um, you know, a handful of people in dozens of people in, in the last week or two, they're, you know, they're starting to really go. But I think you pointed out something that's really important. You know, anybody can go make 10 personals. Anybody can go get to see the rep. Uh, but, it, you know, if you want to go keep climbing, like you hit marketing director in four and a half months, it's going to take, you know, rising your leadership, growing your lid a little bit more. And, and I think you pointed out a really good one. You can't just have people do it for your reasons, or it can't just be about travel and make money. We want, like, uh, eventually we got to figure out why they want to make something like this work and help me do it. Do you want to elaborate kind of a little more on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I really believe everybody comes in at a different starting place when it comes to their leadership level. Because in your leadership is going to dictate how far you go in this business. You can't sell your rank. To, you can't sell your way to different ranks. You can't recruit your way to different ranks. You have to lead your way to different ranks. Because in this business, is a lot harder. See, you're nobody's boss in this business. You're their partner, right? Just because you're somebody's upline or somebody's sponsor, you don't control them. You're not on their. You you literally are just somebody who can lead the way. And the people have to choose to follow you. Not everybody's gonna follow you and that's okay. But the people who buy into the vision, people who buy into their why, give them the time they need to help them develop and grow. And so I realized early on, my leadership, my leadership level starting up, starting uh, coming in, was a marketing director level already. That's why you hit marketing director so quickly, right? But when I realized at that level, I realized that's the level I got relatively stuck at, right? You have to think we hit market record in four and a half months, but for the next nine to 10 months, I was stuck there. And because I had a vision of hitting IMD less than three, in less than a year coming in. And so that killed me. That cr I was like, what's going on? And what I realized was that I wasn't leading the way that God called me to lead. See, I was doing this thing for... For me in the beginning, I was trying to figure out how to make a couple of dollars because I, I had a broke mentality because I was broke. But then when I started learning to make it about everyone else, 
and giving to giving my energy to the people. We came with this system how to fast start train people, right? And we came with that system to fast start train people. We learned what Eric uh, showed us on our upline. It's much respect to Eric. And then we took it and we started to build on that, right? He put the blueprint out. We started to build on that, and that started helping us duplicate our organization so quickly. See, I was a guy where, like you said, a lot of athletes are teachable and coachable. I t the biggest compliment I ever got was I mean from Roscoe Taylor. He said, "Keith, you're probably the most coachable person I've ever had in my organization." because I, I walk with humility and I'm always willing to be coach. See, I knew how good I was, I knew how good I could be, but I had to figure out what I didn't know. And so I always was listening to my upline and respecting them that allowed Dana, Corey, Alfie, um, Roscoe to help me, Eric, you know, I, to help me build this. And so it did not help me build it from that, like putting people in, help me with guidance on how to lead to the next level of their experience. And so when we applied the system of duplication, we had a simple 10 step system that we follow to this day on helping people duplicate right away. Cause we knew the quicker we get them a paycheck in their account, the quicker we got them on a dream trip, the quicker we got them plugged into the fire, that they would actually stay around a lot longer. Our culture has been a very positive culture. Our culture has been a very loving culture. And so we knew our energy and our culture had to be very inviting for people to come in. But also, we get to understand, we still, a lot of times we go with people who are coming in that has no business background. They've never had really a lot of money before. They've never been edified before. So you have a lot of egos coming in to the culture. But our culture usually will push that out and weed people out along the way to protect our culture and keep it, um, keep the integral culture there. And that's allowed us to duplicate people. So now I love seeing when people are going to church without me, right? They go to church together. People met each other, now they're taking trips on their own together. You know, they're creating, uh, they're doing book clubs on their own. They're doing things on their own that they met in WV because of the positive, the culture I was set from day one. And that's what's important when it came to duplication in our organization. Well, and you, I think you hit it right on the head. Like so many people get caught up. And yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. Like this call is meant for people that, you know, want to get off to a fast start. They want to throw gas on a fire. Uh, you know, you know all, all of that. Well, again, I told you, you know, multiple times on this call, our goal is to help you add zeros on your bank account. Uh, Absolutely. You, have. you know, it, we want to help some of you that don't have a comma yet to, in that 15th residual get a comma. We want some of you that are making the four figures to see a five figure one hit in there. But with all that being said, sometimes you get too caught up. Like people, like what, what they're generating success with or you know or kind of looking at was I successful in what I've done with this they forget all so many other positive things that go beyond just how much money you made or how many vacations you've taken like I, I think you hit it right on the head and you're right you know you, you guys within you know Will is strong and, and team Rhino as a whole like some of the best culture I've ever seen globally in world ventures um, it, it really is a family more than just you know th this thing where uh, you know a few people are trying to make money kind of thing and um, I again some people, they, they just need to be around people that believe in them. You know, some people, they, they just need somebody to pour into them and, and believe in them a little bit more than they believed in themselves. And I know that that was me for one. Like I, Dr. Peach, he, he, he just, he said he saw something in me, you know, and he, he just, he spoke that life into me and went, okay, maybe, maybe I can go further than where I'm at right now. And, you know, so that, that's what I love with this. You know, people get around the culture, they, they're meeting people that are building them up instead of tearing them down. You know, you're, you're getting around people that are talking about goals and dreams, not just getting around people talking about people. It's like, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of times, Keith, people in, in the beginning, that they're friends with people like, like, think of your high school friends. You're friends with people because they lived right next to you or, you know, you sat right next to them in class. Then you see something like World Ventures and you realize, oh, wow, like I'm clicking with these people because they are, you know, fitting the same kind of values that I have. They're, they're, they're working towards similar goals and aspirations I have. So it just, it naturally clicks. Now it doesn't click for everybody. And again, we protect that culture too. Like, I mean, we all have the Johnny Rain Cloud, you know, Debbie Downer kind of friends and stuff too. And we love them. We, you know, if, if, if they are willing to work on themselves and stuff, that they can get a lot of maybe even more positive things out than someone that's already a positive of kind of goal oriented person but at the same time you know we, we, we are protective of that culture of um you know supporting people working to help them and all that kind of stuff and yeah I mean, you guys have done a, an amazing job of going and doing that it is cool like step back all of you on this call forget how much money you made forget how many trips you had have taken like i i've made lifelong friends that i would have never met if it wasn't through world ventures 
like Keith and I would have probably never met if it wasn't for World Ventures. But you know, I, I enjoy the time I see him on dream trips. I you know enjoy the the times that we get to have our conversations at events and, and the friendship that's continuing to grow. And I mean that that's just one of many many examples. So don't forget to enjoy the journey. You know, a guy just hit director on our team, Meech out in Philly um, last night, Keith. And I, I remember um, tell the main thing I told him is I remember when I hit director. You know, being reminded by my upline, I told him the same thing. Don't forget to enjoy the journey along the way. Like we have these. Yeah. Here. So you can you can appreciate that. Um, you know, a lot of people they got big goals further than where they're at right now. I know you and I included in that. But don't forget to enjoy that journey along the way. Um, you know, it's, it's it's not that hard to what we're doing. Like you're 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 going you're going through doing Zoom calls, you're doing travel parties, you're uh, you know speaking life into people, believing in them maybe when they don't believe in themselves. Like you know maybe someone's telling us no. Like that's the worst stuff that's happening. We're showing people how they can take vacations they already want to take at a better price. Showing them how they can you know add another source of income when a lot of people you know very much need you know a positive hobby to do in a way to add that right now that's what we have the ability to go do along the way of working towards our goals so um yeah i i can tell that your team has always done a good job of that of appreciating you know day by day and, and, and embracing the journey along the way yeah yeah and that's something and let me tell you i wasn't good at that in the beginning all right because i was those guys like i'm going to hit these goals so i remember the, i remember celebrating senior with my brother brother Corey. uh that was a funny story but I was like, all right, it's cool. We can celebrate for a couple minutes, but like, how soon do we need to hit director? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and director, I don't think I celebrated. I didn't even know I really hit director until like Dana and Corey and was calling me. And then marketing director would move right past that. Like, it, it just, my thing was, I wasn't going to celebrate anything until the, the job was done. But I learned really quickly because I had a lot of great teammates coming around who really cared about me as a person who was just like, Keith, listen, stop. Smile. Enjoy it. You're doing an amazing job. I'm like, Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool, ain't it? You know, and but I found my joy in helping other people win, and that's why I really started to appreciate the journey as I start, we start as we start popping more residual earners. And then also, like, you know, go my time leadership. Some leadership is something I'm very passionate about because it's something that I think is overlooked. I think it's loosely thrown out there, right? We talk about leadership being loosely like, oh, because you hit a ranking, you made a certain amount of money, you're a leader. No, you're not. You know what I mean? That's I don't believe that. You know, I think the type of man, the type of woman you are through adversity will make you a leader. And so I know, I know, I know building this culture is that strong leadership is what, what, what you build to last, right? If you have an organization where it's all about you, it doesn't last. Like I take pride in, you know, um, we haven't really, we have never, I've never lost a rank going through this company. All right. But it's not because I'm great. It's because the people around me are great, right? It's the people around me that have their vision for it. The people around me has brought into the vision. And, and so because of that, I'm not saying my number time go up and down like everybody else's they have, but we built to, we're built to last. We're built to not one person, not one person could bring down an organization. Not, not one team could bring down an organization because we have so much positivity and understand also with leadership, um, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to come to against challenges, right? You're going to, you're going to see challenges and, and it's overlooked because people think, Oh, I got to put a bunch of people in the system, but, a bunch of people in the system with no culture will fall out the system just as much as fast, fast they got into the system. So, but when you build a culture on leadership and a culture of foundation where you only know who's shining because everybody's winning, the best cop I'm get, like, keep every time I turn around, so on your team is popping the rank. Absolutely. It's because the type of leadership we have within our organization. And, uh, and, and I'm just fortunate that I said just before them. That's only as I happened to see it before they saw it. That's the only that separates us, right? But because of the people that we have in our organization in our team is the reason that we're so reason that why our team is so great and because of the people that came before me that was able to lead me appropriately is the reason why we've done what we have done. Well, and you, you hit it right there. So c culture is what makes people stay. I, I 100% agree with that. I, I would love to hear, maybe just get, give a couple minutes on that. Like, what, what, what do you do? So if you're somebody that's got, you know, a, a, a new team growing, or maybe you're even new, you know, your whole, so your whole organization is new or whatnot. Yeah. Like, what, what, what can you do? Like, if, if you got people working hard, and, and again, I, I, you got to work on yourself too. So I 100% agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm on a amount of money, or it's not a rank that makes you a leader. I love how you put, you know, go through adversity is what's going to make you a leader. Because no, nobody wants to hear from the guy that never struggled. Like it yeah. was just easy for it. And, like people want to. I tell that to people all the time. Like you know, I, I had a guy a couple weeks ago. Keith, you know, he's going. He gets his four in like a day. Uh, you know, and, and it was like four for four. And I even told him, I was like, 
I, I can't wait till we show the first person that tells you no. That's where we really start. Well, sure enough, the first person told him no, you know, went boo, scared him, and he, you know, he, he was sucking his thumb ready to be done 20 minutes later. And it's like, see, I, I, you, you, you're not a leader just because you can go make a few sales. You're a leader when you can get knocked down and get back up again. Uh, but as, as far as like the people wanting to create culture, what, 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 are, what are some things that you would recommend them that, that do? I'm so glad you asked this question. Listen, when people hear culture, I've learned the WV, people think about kumbaya. All right, I'm not the kumbaya guy. Let's be clear about that. Create what you want to see, right? Create what you want duplicated. So in the beginning, if you're brand new on this call, go build what you want to see built without you 10 years from now. I'm going to say that again. Go do and build what you want to now, what you want to see being built without you 10 years from now. Meaning, I knew I wanted speed in my organization. So guess what I did? I went to go build speed. See, I didn't come in, I didn't come over and say, I'm the leader, I'm the leader, I'm the leader. I never want to say that. But what I will go do is lead by example. So I went and put people in the system. I went and duplicated people. I was on the planes. I was, on the, I was in um, Ubers. I was in people's couches, on their living rooms, sleeping in some spare bedrooms. I was doing what I want to see duplicated. Is everybody going to do that? Absolutely not, but the right ones are. And so I want to set the example. Um, I want to set the example of what this could actually be. And so I set a culture of building first. We build. But guess what? Now when I go on vacation for a month or take a two-month vacation or whatever the case may be, my team is still building without me because the culture was set. Now I had to learn to add fun in the organization. See, the good thing is what I've done is also when it comes to leadership, understand who your team is. See, one of my best friends, a uh, uh, director on a team named Jack, uh, everybody loves Jack, but he was the blue I needed in my life to bring the fun to my organization. See, before, see, Jack was one of the first people I signed up, but when he got plugged in finally, he brought that flair to the organization that was needed because I'm not the blue, right? And so um, I'm a yellow red. And so, but when Christy Jones, the market director of 100K Ring on my organization, see, I allow her to operate her gifts in our organization because she people need to feel that love, that that that, that motherly hen feel, and where people just feel good around Christy Jones, right? That's why her team loves her the way they do. You know what I'm saying? We got people at Res, we got people like Samita Sharma, who's a 100K Ring earner, who came in there start kicking everybody's butt, right? But we need that joke as well. And so. What are, I got my guy Sheen, who's a green, a Tampa uh, a market director, soon be 100K earner out of uh, Tampa, Florida, who will hold everybody accountable if you don't say a certain word correctly or if, if uh, you say something wrong in a presentation. Like, be quiet, Sheen. We know, you, you know you're super green. But my point is this. Allow your team, as you're creating culture and leading, to be who they are. And allow them to do the things they're great at because the, we need everybody to create the culture we need. I'm not going to force Sheen to be a blue, even though he has blue in him. I'm not gonna force Christy to be a red, even though she has, you know, she knows she has to step up in that category, but I'm not gonna force her to be a red when her yellow is a natural color. I'm not gonna force me to be a super yellow when she's naturally a red. But also, as you're creating this culture, um, as you're allowing people to be who they are as a leader, once you've done your part, it's your job to bring it all together and allow it to mesh so it can be like a seamless process when it comes to leadership. Again, though, some people are like, well, tell me how to sign people up. I'm teaching you how to keep people signed up. Right now I'm teaching you that they add a zero to your bank account. This added a lot of zeros to my bank account, right? From this, this is my thought process that I built, as I built my entire organization because I know I decided this thing to be a great salesman. It does not hard to sell people on travel. So I think people feel like, oh, I put 500 personal in, great, it's travel. Now go to Alaska and sell ice to 500 Eskimos and see how good you do with that. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, that's the real work, right? It's travel and it's residual income. It's not hard to do. But what's hard to do is to create leaders in an organization where people don't have to follow you. And that comes with culture building. That's good stuff. Well, look, and, you know, people hear the saying all the time. They, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And you know, again, I, I've always respected, you, you know, your, your hustle and the, you know, the over the top you've been willing to go to show that you have, that, that's all people really want to know. They want to know that you have their back. They want to know, yes. like, you guys are wondering why some of your close friends are on the border of getting started and they haven't joined with you yet. Or when you're sitting down and, and like you're getting that, that awkward maybe. They don't want to be your experiment. They don't want to look like an idiot in front yes. of 
friends a couple months from now because you're not there to help them. They don't want to sign up for some weird nighttime job and have to try to go pitch this to everybody by themselves when they're just getting started. They want to know someone's got their back. They're there to help them. When they don't know what to do with something, someone's going to be there to coach them. Someone's going to be there helping, you know, as, as they grow. Not someone's going to do everything for them, but somebody's going to be there to help them. See, see the difference with that? Because we also got some guys they want to sign up like, all right, let me just give you some of my guys and you go talk. Well, no, 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 it doesn't work like that either because Keith hit it right on the head. Did you guys catch that? You want to do, right now in your business, do what you want to see being done without you 10 years from now. I love how he put that. Think of like, or, you know, you, or another way people say it all the time is, you know, if your team did what you did today, how much money would you make? And some people are like, oh man, I'd be making a lot. Other people's like, yeah, hope that's not the case that's happening. But again, so like it's now now's the perfect time you put your foot down on the gas and you be doing what you want your leaders and your organization doing 10 years from now without you. But you got to get the leadership going. You got to get the organization going. You know, I have a lot of respect for Keith. A lot of you might not know this. He has no spillover. So for those of you brand new that don't understand what spillover is, that's when somebody that, you know, puts you in, puts people on your team in. I have spillover, a whole bunch of, you know, vast majority of you on this call have spillover. Keith is one of those rare people, just like my mentor, Dr. Peach, started and went from the bottom to the top without any other help. Uh, again, he has great leaders help on his team, obviously, and didn't do it by himself, which he, you know, very humbly has pointed out multiple times, but wrap that around your head. He wasn't waiting for somebody to go and help him do it. He went, okay, he's not waiting for, well, I, I'm in now, so I should be making money for this for the next 10 years. No, he went, no, I'm going to start this, get it going, and then I'm going, like, that's why Keith, I always respect Dr. Peach. I tell him this all the time. Like, you were the greatest player for years and years, and now you're sitting here, you know, as, as one of the greatest coaches. Like, he reminds me of like a Phil Jackson played, played at a very high level, coaches at a very high level, and, you know, look at what he's helped go and do. But he kept his foot on the gas years ago. You know, so he hit IMD in 10 months. He kept his foot on the gas for years after that. Got it going so much, got so many other great leaders that he would say are better than him, that when then he does take his foot off the gas, here it is, 10 years later, and Dr. Peach has exactly what you're talking about. And that's what I think we all aspire to have. But that doesn't come without putting that work in ourselves, too. And, uh, again, that, that's what I've respected with you from day one. Like, you have never shied away from hard work, regardless of how that hard work was. And, and again, that, that's all this is. You have to work hard, and you're going to be grossly underpaid in the beginning. But you have to see why you're doing that hard work, and you're a great example of that. Man, I appreciate that, man. It's absolutely true, right? Right now, I'm still going hard, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, great leaders are just like, you know, I'm very adamant when people hear me all the time on trainings. I've never did a Zoom before the pandemic, right? So then when the pandemic hit, I had to adjust to Zoom and we still built really hard. You see, we, we're still popping ranks because great leaders are just, I'm not one, I'm not like, for instance, you certainly saw Hertz go out of business, right? Because they didn't want to adjust. You know what I mean? All these companies going out of business didn't want to adjust. And I'm not that guy, I'm not going to adjust. So I knew how to adjust through the season right now. So now I added, I added a different skill set in this um, um, to my tool belt as we build with the Zoom, right? And so, yeah, as soon as the pandemic's over, oh, yeah, I'm hitting the road for 30, 60 days, and I'm going to visit all my markets, and we'll get it in, right? But now I know that this is another way we can build. So, yeah, we, we've done something pretty amazing here, man, when it comes to leadership. And then also, I just saw one that a question in the chat about um, – about your upline and feeling like a dictatorship, right? And the one thing I'll say about this, guys, look at your upline's fruit, right? Just because I didn't see, I respected David Peach, Eric Grzbowski, Roscoe Taylor, um, uh, Dana James, Corey Brown, Alfie Brown. See, I didn't respect, I respect them because what they've done before I came in this thing, right? By the numbers and everything. But I chose to follow them because of the people who they are. See, I respect David Peach as a man. That's why I choose to follow. I respect Eric as a man, Corey as a man, Dana as a woman. I Alphys became one of my best friends. You know what I mean? See, I chose to follow them. The numbers didn't make me follow somebody. So I say that because they also was not dictators in my organization. They, I, I'm, Eric G never did a presentation for me or my team or my market until I hit NMD. All right, that was my first child party I had when I hit NMD. Yeah, I was like, hold on, keep it. That's crazy. My first child party I actually had for myself was when I hit NMD. And Eric G and Hadiatu came and did my child party for me, right? Um, and then, um, but Dana and Corey, we just talked about this on the previous call, they wasn't a dictator on how 
hey, Keith, do this, do that. They coached me and, and partnered with me. As I leave my organization, I, I partner with people. I'm not nobody's boss. I say, I'm just partnering with you. Say, hey, with my experience of what I've learned, if I was you, I would do this. If I would do that, if I saw that you wasn't trying to buy the vision, I'll let you do what you got to go do. So don't let nobody dictate you because you're still a grown adult. You're still a man. You're still a woman. And you need to lead the best way you need to know how to. But be careful in who you follow. Make sure the people you're following can back it up with their fruit. Get back with their words and their actions, and the fruit is there to show. If there's no fruit, be careful with that, okay? So that, that's huge as far as us when it comes to our organization. Yeah, I, I remember, um, I, I think this is before you had gotten in, Marcus said at one of our national events, he, he did a, a character talking about, uh, or I don't even know if it was a character, I think it was he, he was telling a story of like one of his mentors when he was younger, and, and somebody was talking about how big is your stack, and it was like, it was a guy trying to really coach somebody up, um, it, it was, so let, let me give you the flip side to whoever was asking that question, it was like, um, it was someone in the downline kept trying to tell the person in the upline, you know, what he thinks should be happening, and finally the, the upline mentor so I was like, how big is your stack? He's like, what do you mean? He was like, well, you know, I made this much money last month. You, you, I have this many people in my organization. You've made this much or you've only been doing it for this long. You know, if I listen to you, I might not be, I can't afford to do that because where, where you're at, like that doesn't, so it's like, I, I understand that where, where the fruit is. I think you hit that perfectly for, for those trying to kind of figure that out. Like, and again, whether it's upline or not, follow people that know where they're going, follow people that are having the results. Again, the reason Keith, I've tried to get you on here for months is because you're ha you and your team are having the results. Not, not from years ago, right now, you guys are continuing mm -hmm. to get results. And, and I, I would just encourage people, you know, why, you know, if your business isn't going as fast as you want it to, pay attention to the ones that are winning and figure out what, why. It, it, it's, not, it's not that they're, you know, it's not because Keith can grow a better beard than you that he's winning. It's <laughs> like, figure out why the actual reason is someone's having success and then see what you can do to tweak. Again, that's what one of these calls has always been uh, kind of geared towards Keith. But, you know, one, one thing. I think it'd be really appropriate um, for you to kind of touch on is like, like you said, you're still in the field working and making things go hard. There's a lot of people on here that have some momentum and you know, it's, it's a weird thing. Momentum is one of those things like <laughs> for anyone that's ever had it, man, like <laughs> when you have it, it is the greatest feeling in the world. And then when you don't have it, which by the way, no one ever just has momentum. <laughs> I'm just go like that forever. You're going to have these ups and downs, but when you're when you dip down, you know, comparatively speaking to when you had one, all you can do is just be gut wrench trying to, you know, just you know, remember what it was like to have it. And I really want to encourage because there's a lot of people that do have momentum on here. And, and Keith, I'd love for you to touch on it. Is you know, the time to put your foot down is when you have the momentum. Absolutely. But what naturally feels like you want to do is I worked so hard to get the momentum going now. You, like, 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 like you said, t have your business going where you want it 10 years from now. But people work hard for 10 weeks and then want to take their foot off like it's been 10 years. Right? Like the, the people that have stuff going on, they're the ones that need to stomp that foot down even more. They're the ones that got to recommit even more. Because again, you got to remember what it takes to get something going. And like, I'd love for, you know, if you were kind of talking to one of your leaders that has momentum going and, and, and to really encourage them what to do of the difference between starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping get it going wanting to coast off of uh, off of what you've started too soon like what would you say to that person man that's a great question I mean, i'm sitting here like well, i can go so many different ways with this question i'm go from a, a, a sports background but then i also go to, uh, from a business background right so basically i'm trying to combine the both so basically in football or basketball the hardest thing you need to create momentum you see teams going like in basketball they go on a 10-0 run a 20 old run, you're like, yo, how can that, that team stop? How can they not stop that team from scoring 20 straight points on them? Or you see in the game, uh, you see a football game is a is a is a grudge, there's a grudge, all of a sudden 21 points scored right away because of momentum. And see, one thing I learned in sports growing up and just in life, when you got the momentum, you keep a foot on their neck, no matter what. You don't let you don't let off. You keep the foot on it. That's probably in sense of what's going on right now. But you keep, you keep the pressure on. You apply the pressure no matter what when you have momentum, right? And so you don't let it up because you don't know when it's going to come back. So what I've learned in business is that as you're, as you're building and you got momentum, what I've done is that at the faster we go, the more detailed I get. Again, the faster we go, the more detailed we get because when you have momentum, it seems like everybody's just coming in. 
But my thing is, I want to make sure that everybody's not falling out. So I look, I, I'm, I'm strategic, like, okay, cool. If Christy Jones has a lot of momentum right now, let me go tie up the things that she may miss on her organization, right? To, to her, so she can keep the momentum. So I can, I can push the momentum from bottom up, right? Christy, I'm not going to stop Christy. So Christy, you keep building. Jack, keep building. Samita, keep building. Kanisha, keep building. Brian, keep building. Sheen, keep building. And as a leader, I'm going to go tie things up to keep pushing from bottom up to maintain the momentum if they realize it or not, right? So I get very green and detailed in that, in that um, building aspect. See, if we're all just throwing people in, we got a thousand new people who don't know, who don't know what to do. See, I, I consider myself that, and every person feel this way, that you should be the best trainer your team knows, right? You should be the best trainer your team knows. So I'm going to be the one to go train them, their, their teams, while they're watching me so I can help, they, so they can learn. So eventually as I get back up, they continue to train their teams. And so as we're, building more, as we're going momentum, I'm not going to stop the person who's creating the momentum. I'm going to tell them, keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to assist you by training your team, getting them started, keep it going, and you keep throwing them to the system. So if I'm... If I happen, if I'm, I'm looking at David right now, right, as he's killing the game, he's signing people up, he's doing it. So if I was Davis up with our day, like me and David is really building this thing together, Dave, keep doing what you're doing. You folks on that, you're hot, so you keep shooting the rock. I'll make sure I'm this, the guy who keeps, feet, who keeps, uh, who keeps uh, feeding you the rock. You know what I mean? I'm the guy, hey, keep feeding David the rock, and guess what? I'll make sure the team is behind David to keep him hot right now. That's going to be my job as a, as a leader. And, and see, your people, and again, back to leadership when it comes to momentum, just some of the strongest leaders are not seen. Hear me. Some of the strongest leaders aren't seen, are not heard, okay? And see, a lot of people want attention so badly, don't mess up their own momentum to get attention, to be edified. Oh, David's winning. Let me throw my, my face in the picture so some people can see me too. No. The great leaders will say, how can I make sure David keeps winning? What can I do? And you don't have to be seen or heard to make that happen. And that's something that I take pride in is that I want, I want people who know my residual earners are. I want people to know who my leaders are. I'm not scared to put my leaders out there, but they know I'm not going to put them out there until they're ready to be put out there either, right? Because they want to earn that leadership title. I don't throw the little leadership around. So when it comes to momentum, we, do, we create momentum by action but then we pay attention to detail as we're creating it. And as a leader, understand how to support your team as momentum is created, because when you lose it, it is so freaking hard to get it back. So I, and the one thing I also say was this, that when it comes to momentum, if you ever lose momentum, no, no, if you, when you gain momentum a second time, a third time, you always have to go back and realize, what did you do wrong to lose it the first time? Because if you don't lose from what you did the first time, it's going to happen again when you do the second and third run. So I was very fortunate to have momentum probably majority of the time to IMD through my organization. Because I always was learning, okay, Keith, I it slowed down or it stopped. What did I do wrong? What can I do differently? And it's going back to watch a film. Even when we win games in the NFL or college, let me tell you what we do the next day. We all go back and watch film. Win or loss, we go back and watch film. And so to see how can we get better for the next week, do the same thing in business. No matter how much you win today or how much you lose, go back and reanalyze yourself and refocus and watch film on yourself and see how you get better the next day. Oh, I, I had never thought of it that way from, from a film standpoint. That's so, th think about it when, you, when, when we're watching a game on TV, quarterback throws an interception. What is he doing? Watch iPad. Watch quarterback you know. throws a touchdown. What's he doing? He's on the iPad still. Like, when, like so, so many, I, I know I got caught up in this in, in learning in my own leadership journey, Keith, where, you know, things go good. And it's like, it, not, not even like you hear the phrase, like people forget where they come from, but they also forget to do like the, the little things. And I know my wife and I have had that talk, uh, you know, over the eight years we've done this, where there was times where it's like, you're, you know, things start going good. And like, here, I'll be very vulnerable on this. So hopefully this helps somebody on here. Things start going good for you and you forget to do the little things that got you there. Yes. So like you used to be reading 15 pages, you know, of a book a day, you used to be listening to an entire audio uh, several times a week. And all of a sudden now you have it, you know, you know, put on a, a WP audio in two weeks. 
but the team's still going. Or like you used to be doing 10 calls a day. Now you've probably done 10 calls in the last week, but it, you know, it's, it's sales are still going in. So it feels okay. And like people miss, I, I love what you said that you just got to reanalyze, you know, what, what did I do to get here? so I can keep it going. And because again, you're always going to have those ups and downs, but man, that, that, that is so dead on. Like, just, just think of watching film on our own business of, you know, not, not only if people did what I did, you know, you know, yesterday, last week, how much money would I make if everyone on my team was doing that? But like, what, what did, what did we do good that we can continue doing next week? Or what can we change? Like, I mean, it, it really is that simple. It's, it's just take it, you know, t- taking a step back and go, okay, what do we do good? What do we need to improve on? And then constantly just working at, at doing that. And, you know, yeah, you're competing against other people and you're, you're competing against wanting to hit a rank. But just try to continue, like, what can you do to do just as good and then a little better than what you did last week? For some of you, yeah. you doing one or two calls. Maybe, maybe someone's going to have, like, I gave it everything I had last week, Keith. I don't know how I can give it anymore, but I'm going to dig deep down and find something to do it. And it's just piling those up. And what you're talking about, Dave, is the fundamentals at the end of the day. It's the fundamentals. How many free throws can you shoot when the gym is closed? Right? How many three points can you take? How many balls can you catch? How many times can you do the little things that people glorify when, they get, when the lights come on? It's like doing the fundamentals consistently over and over and over. The one thing I always take pride in is that you're not going to watch, watch more quick coach videos than I am. Not gonna, I watch them over and over and over to sharpen my skill, my skill set up. So it's doing the fundamentals and little things over and over, man. That's what it's about when it comes to doing this. And that, yeah. Well, and, you know, Eric talked about this when, when he walked stage for one of the fancy ranks or, you know, milestones that he had hit. But it's like, you know, everybody wants to get praised in public, but you, you get praised in public for what you do in private. So it's like you know, people ask all the time, you know, all right, how, 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 what are you doing? How's it going fast? Or, you know, they're just like, they're like, like people are looking for a shortcut all the time. And it's like, they, they don't want the answer. This is, again, why I like people like you on this call. The answer, if you want to really have massive momentum, the answer, if you really want to go hit one of the high, higher ranks in the company, is you got to go work your face off. Like, you have to do Zoom calls until your throat hurts. Like, I, I, I literally got two cavities filled yesterday, Keith, because I suck on cough drops all the time because my throat hurts. Like, but that's what it is. Like, people, people don't want to have to go travel to seven other cities and go on a 30-day tour to go say hi to your leaders, but you're willing to go over the top to show you got their back. Like, it, it, you just you – ha- you have to put that work in, and it's brick by brick. It's meeting by meeting. Yes. Meeting by travel party. And you pile up that. I mean, think about it. How, how do these people you, – you, you talk about going, like, on a 10-0 run or a 20-0 run in a game. Well, how, how do people go on a run and get hot and go all the way to, you know, to a world championship? Because they started it – play by play, series by series, and then put it on game by game. That's all we're doing with this business the exact same way. It's crazy how many sports analogies fit right to this. No, absolutely. And, and that's what it's about. And another thing, you know, and I, I saw this question come through and people ask me this question all the time. Keith, what's the one thing that you learn as an athlete that you apply to this business, one skill set, right? And let me tell you something. Leadership is one, right? Leadership, I think, is the fundamental thing that you want to win, right? But it's the execution. The ability to execute in adversity. Hear what I'm saying? The ability to execute in adversity. You see, we're in a time right now where the world's in adversity. We're in a time right now where there's a lot of distractions. So now I take the sports, sports, there's a lot of distractions in the stands. There's a lot of distractions on the sidelines. There's a lot of distractions on the, in media. There's a lot of distractions when you're an athlete, right? Or in anything, whatever your profession is, there's a lot of distractions. But how many people can focus and execute through exact um, do distractions and right and I knew if I didn't execute and focus through the adversity and through distractions, I'll be cut and sent home the next day. I will not be put in the game because the game is guess what? It's when you're playing the game at any sport you play, the game is full of distractions. You have a you have a defender trying to distract you from getting to, to getting to that goal. No matter what sport you're in, you got a defender in it. And so, if you can't overcome that distraction, you cannot win. So, when you apply it to business, no matter what it is, you have to go overcome distractions. Sometimes distractions on your team. Sometimes it's the ability to to manage personalities and to understand how to move with people, how to avoid people, how to x people out, how to bring people in. You have to be able to navigate and execute, 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 and lead through adversity no matter what. Because to get anything in life, to do anything major in life, anything worth talking about in life, it's the ability to execute no matter what, no matter what type of hate you get as a leader, no matter what type of love you do or do not get, no matter what is thrown in your way, no matter what is coming at, coming at you, can you execute and stay consistent through that time? Because you can't stay consistent with what David's talking about, 
brick by brick by brick. Think about a, think about if somebody's building a, a beautiful building. And they and they put five bricks down and came back a month later, put five more bricks down, came back a month later, and like you're not consistent. Well, the guy who puts the brick by brick by brick and don't take a month off, by the time you come back a month later, we're three levels up. And then by taking another brick, we're seven levels up. And see what we did as, for Willow Strong is that we just kept going brick by 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 brick. To this day, still want brick by brick. Because our empire is not finished, we're not finished being built. Amongst the distractions in the world, we're still locked in and focused. Not everybody, but enough people are locked in and focused on our team that we're still going brick by brick. And that's why I see the results popping rank by rank. Keith, you are an absolute beast. Seriously, I cannot believe the hour already flew by. Thank you so much, bro. Um, man, any last closing words you want to do before we wrap all this up? Yeah, just really quick, guys. Be sensitive and have a heart for what's going on in this world right now. I know we're on a business call. I know we're on WV, but the one them says one, love God. Two, speak for what is right. Do not stay silent in a time like this. I don't care if you're black, white, orange, green, yellow. I don't care what you are. You don't stay silent for what you see is right. Going to be be a voice for the people that doesn't doesn't have a voice. We just lost a lot of amazing people over the last thirty days um, in this world from the pandemic, from violence, brutality. Be a voice. Be a light, guys. This is not time to stay silent. Fight for what you believe in. Stand for what you believe in, but more importantly, do it with love, do it with integrity, and what we'll, most point out, and in, in, in all of that, do it with God in your heart. Hey, well said, Keith. Thank you again so much, bro. Hope everyone has a great weekend. God bless. Thanks again. Thank you.